Margie, my mom. Hello. <laughs> she actually is going to come and help us do a pollo guisado or pollo africase, Puerto Rican style, mm -hmm. which is delicious, so I can attest to it. So um, at Adornos Boricua, we sell organic sofrito, and we recently started our Zesty Organic Sofrito, and there will be plenty of other tutorials where we're going to showcase the Zesty Organic Sofrito, but just as a warning, it's super hot. So today, we're going to start with the pollo guisado, mm -hmm. and my mom is actually going to actually be driving today in the tutorial. So what do we have there, mom? Well, we have here, we already got the, uh, the chicken, and we took all the skin out from the chicken, okay, because we don't want to taste that, that uh, skin, skin uh, taste. And, um, it ends up chicken. tasting like chewy, and it's not good. It's not good. It's, not good. it's too much uh, grease. Too much grease, yeah, and we try to keep our figures. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to start with this. We with start with, with a cumin powder mix, mm -hmm. just to give it a taste. Stir it. Stir it. And we have about half a chicken in there. Um, it depends on how many people you try to serve. Mm -hmm. uh, half a chicken will probably uh, feed about three to four people, uh, depending on how much that person. And if you, the better you make it, trust me, the less you're gonna have in your caldero or in your cauldron. You can do this as you make your chicken in, at home to fried chicken, to make fried chicken. Um, we're going to put some well, garlic salt. Uh -huh. A little bit of garlic salt here. Sometimes it depends on how much sodium you're um, watching your diet, but um, the garlic salt brings a little bit of a taste. Now the organic sofrito has organic garlic in it, um, but with the salt it gives it a little bit more of taste. We like our food with flavor. And remember that you're starting, you're, you're basically um, going to have this uh, uh, being cooked thoroughly uh, with liquids. So sometimes when you cook with liquids, sometimes the flavor of the chicken, if you don't actually uh, uh, marinate it right, it comes off and you end up with bland chicken and you don't want that. Yeah. I'm already put some, a little bit of, of um, brown, pepper. brown pepper. Now, we're going to put some vinegar. What kind of vinegar you put? You can put a uh, red apple uh, vinegar, or you can put the white vinegar. That's the one that I always use at home because we are here. I have to use her. Which is what? Wine vinegar. And with that, also we're going to put some cooked oil. Cooking oil. oil. And you'll have all the measurements. Um, in the recipe card that is in our blog. Here we have about four or five, five oil. ounces of, mm -hmm. of oil, yeah. yeah. And you want to cover your chicken in the oil really good. Yeah. So you're going to do this. You're going to put it all together. So now, you're going to do this. It smells so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tastes good too. Yeah, so that we haven't even put the, the sofrito in it. <laughs> Now, what we're going to do is this, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to put this potatoes here that I already, it's already cut. And diced. Dice. And it's about three medium uh, potatoes in there. And you're going to put it salted around the chicken, like this, right? Mm -hmm. So they've been actually in water. They're in water so they can... Uh, cold water. Cold water so they, they won't go brown on you. Like this in here. Now, mommy, who taught you how to make this chicken? My mother, your grandmother. Rest in peace with God. And she is one of the best cooks that I ever know. I, I, I learned with her. After this, you're going to use um a couple bay leaves. Bay leaves, you see? Ojo, like hoja de laurel. Hoja de laurel, exactly. You put it like this. Now remember that uh, the bay leaves or hojas de laurel has a lot of flavor in them. Yeah. So the very more good. you put, you can actually overpower your food. So be very careful how much hojas de laurel. You sometimes you think that if the more you're going to put, the more flavor you're going to get. You end up like making your food taste more like the herb rather than the food. And you don't want that. Now we're going to put a couple of these um, tablespoons of the organic yeah. sofrito, which is organic sofrito. You're going to put it like this in the top of your chicken and your potatoes. 
because you want the potatoes that is starchy to absorb all of that flavor from the herbs and spices. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. this is the the superstar of the uh, pollo guisado. Yeah. This is the best part. If ever you are using those over the counter um sofritos, the ones that are watery, and you realize that your pollo guisado doesn't come out with flavor, yeah. that is why. Yeah, it doesn't taste good. Yeah. It's and all about the these flavor that you're trying to find. And get from in your in your food. You don't going to get it from these people from the supermarket. So in here, I put almost uh, three and a half teaspoon tablespoon. Oh, tablespoon. I'm sorry. Of sofrito. sofrito. Adornos por rico. Adornos por rico. Don't forget that. Now I'm going to put some olive oil. I mean olive oil. Look at me. Olive, which is basically olive, like an olive salad where it has the red peppers and everything else in it. And it's in a grind, which is like a little vinegary, vinegary, vinegar. Like this. Remember that you have to, um, how do you pull, I don't know. You have to adorn? Yes, you put, and it's going to look beautiful. Yeah, I know. It's going to look beautiful because what you don't see that it doesn't look good, okay. That's it's true. Food starts with the eye. If it's yeah. pleasing to the eye, mm -hmm. you will want to eat it. Although there have been some foods that look really good and they taste good. But this one, mm-mm-mm. This is uh, beautiful. Look at this. Look at the colors. Look at all these colors. They look good. And believe me, you're going to love it. And there is that honey. I wish the candy had this um, sense of smell. The smell? Yeah. Now we're going to use um, a can of sauce, tomato which, sauce. Which is about eight ounces of tomato sauce. And you're going to put it. And you're going to put it on top of the whole mixture sparingly. Yes. Now mind you, as my mom is putting the flavors, you're basically getting layers and layers of flavor. So what's going to happen is that as it's cooking, all of that flavor is going to go down to the bottom. Yes. And it's going to be absorbed slowly. And you're going to love it too. Yes. Going to see, you're going to surprise your family. All those people who, especially the the the, the bachelor people who want to cook and surprise someone special, you can do this. Are you trying to get back to the marriage thing? Uh, I don't know about marriage stuff. Just yeah. people that are single <laughs> and they're trying to trying to get a man. Uh huh. Maybe. Like my daughter here. Yeah. I'm not trying to get a man. Well, I have. At least, at least you know. Okay. At the end, you're going to put. A little bit of cooking oil. I mean, the cooking oil. I have a problem with the cooking oil. You got a problem with the English? Yes. Cooking wine. Also, we got two. Saying in Spanish, everybody understands. Well, you're going to. Let me do it in English. I'm sorry. Go Maybe ahead. I can learn something. Okay. If I get wrong, people, you just have to write to me or to my daughter and let me know, okay? I just try to do my best. Un poquito de vino de cocinar in the top of that. Like this. Nah. Ahora viene lo bueno. Esto es jugo de uva. This is grape juice. Uh -huh. Eso mismo. From concentrated, 100%. Okay. So we're going to flour this in the top of your chicken and yes. everything that you put in there. And, and you you're going to cover everything. You basically actually are about... Um, you're covering everything that's in there. You just a little bit be, uh, below covering everything, submerging everything. And what that does is that it actually that adds to the sauce that you're gonna have in the. Um, um, need some water in there. About four, six ounces of water. Put it up. Okay, now you're going to put some a little bit of water here, like this. And there you go. That's it. So then you're gonna cover it. Cover it this, like this. What kind of heat, mom? Let's put this in medium high, okay? For well, about how long? Uh, for medium high, for about um, let's say half an hour. And in half an hour, we're going back to the stove and we're going to check everything, how it's been, you know, cooking and everything, cómo se está haciendo, y después de eso. Vamos a volverlo a tapar porque tenemos que removerlo para que todo el, el, el um, los ingredientes. ingredientes se integren al pollo y luego vamos a dejarlo ya al final cuando esté la salsa espesa porque tiene que estar la salsita espesa para que ustedes puedan saborear 
el pollo muy bien. Okay, so the translation is that is that you're gonna have it cooked for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, you're gonna go back and check it on the stove. You're gonna move it and make sure that all of the flavors are melted and all the ingredients are melted together. Now you know that because of the starch in the potato, your sauce is gonna be a little bit more, um, uh, no, it's a little bit more like um, dense. The, it becomes a little bit more dense. It becomes more like a gravy rather than just a watery sauce. So if you want things to be a little bit more watery, then you add more water, obviously. And if you want things to be a little bit thicker, then you let it cook the way it is in the recipe. Um, this actually can be used and cooked and served next to white rice, which is what we're going to have at the end of the tutorial. We can have arroz con gandule, which is rice with chickpeas. Uh, we can have it arroz borro, which is uh, rice with black beans. Mm -hmm. um, I love to have it with rice, but I'm Puerto Rican. We can have it with verdura, which is basically root uh, vegetables that you can find or with plantains. I mean, it, it, there's a whole array. There are times when it's left over, you can have it as a sandwich. It really is your choice, but it's something that uh, is different. It's something different to do with chicken. So, Mom, what were you going to say? Uh, at the end, when everything is, uh, you know, done, um, prepare. You can use some um, sweet tea, okay, and you put it in the top. About, about what, two cups of sweet peas or maybe one cup? Maybe half a cup. Half a cup of sweet peas and then you put that on top. Yes, this is a in, this, in this, this, in this uh, plate now, because it's not that much, okay, it's just a half of the chicken. I'm going to put like a half a cup of that, because sometimes the people don't like to, to, to have too many sweet peas. Too many sweet but peas. It, this is a great opportunity for your kids. If you want to uh, sneak in the vegetables, you can put the sweet peas, you can cook it with um, carrots. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of people put different type of other um, vegetables inside of it. Uh, just so that you can sneak it into the kids because since all the flavors are together, they won't know what the fact they're eating. But you know, at the end, it's always great to have it with some good aguacate. That's the best part oh, of it. Oh, yes. But we're going to stop right now and we're going to come back when it's almost done. Okay? Stay Thank tuned. You. See you later. Alright, so we're back and now it's completely finished. We actually made white rice in the meantime while the pollo guisado was getting cooked. And so you see the pollo guisado here. We're going to have a lot of pictures in the blog with how good it looks. The starch on the potatoes has actually thickened the gravy of the pollo guisado, which you can see here. And we actually wanted to be extra healthy and put a little bit of a salad here. So we're going to have all of the uh, details on how to do the, this particular recipe and as well as pictures. So stay tuned. So thank you so much.